Hi guys, it's Roy from Belados 3D here and for this week's video I'm going to create a Lego figurine in Blender. Okay, let's get started. Um, first things first, let's delete this default cube. We don't need him anymore. Bye bye cube. I'm going to then turn on, I've already imported um, two images as reference. If you'd like to know how to do that, how to add reference images, then let me know in the comments and I will look into doing a video on that. Um, but I'm just going to quickly adjust this one because it's a little bit out of line. Let's put it in line again. Back in there. Right, okay. First things first, we're going to create the body. So we will press Shift A, Mesh, Cube to create a cube tab into edit mode and then we'll press G and Z to bring it up to the top line just about there. If I press Alt Z that will turn it into the X-ray mode so you can see through the mesh and I'm just going to select the bottom vertices and press G Z again to bring it up to this line here and again if I select everything I press S and X to scale it in and bring it in to about then if I drag and click the top vertices there, I can do the same to bring that in so that these lines are parallel. And if I press 3 on the numpad, go into right orthographic mode and select everything, I can then scale on the Y axis by pressing S and Y and bringing it in. And again, that reference image isn't quite right, so if I go back into object mode, select the reference image, press G and Y, and we just move that so it's in line and, press. and now we have the general shape we'll go back into edit mode there and we'll select those bottom vertices I'm going to go into face mode and extrude that by pressing the E key and then bringing it down if I'm holding the shift to do it slowly just to bring it down down to that line about there okay if I come out of x-ray so we can see it's in solid mode we will need to bevel these edges slightly so if I select everything and go into edge mode by pressing 2 on the keyboard or clicking up here I can then shift click these four loops here so we only have the outside edges there and then press ctrl B and slowly bring it out and as you can see it bevels the edges there now if I scroll up on the wheel there it adds loops through and we can bring it up and try to line it up about there I would say okay so if we come out of object um, edit mode into object mode as you can see it's not very smooth the edges aren't very smooth um, quite jagged you can see the lines of the bevels so if we right click while it's selected and select shade smooth that will smooth the edges and it will give you a lovely more smooth edges there right next part down to the hips now the hips are part um, made out of two objects um, as you can see you've got your bar across here and then you've got another piece in here which if you look at the side piece is a circle and it intersects with that piece so what we will be doing is we'll be creating a cube and a cylinder and we use the uh, boolean modifier to carve a piece out of that um, plate there for the uh, this part here so what we'll do is we press shift and A and we create yet again another cube and going into edit mode I'm going to put x-ray on again select the top um, edges and press G and Z to bring that up so it's close on to about there and again with the bottom piece G and Z to bring it up to about there select tool scale on the X and bring it in line it up and in the right hand mode S and Y to scale on the Y axis and bring it into about there and as you can see for some reason it's not quite right so I'm just going to bring that back 
to about. That should do it. Back into object mode. Control Z. I'm going to create a cylinder. And this cylinder, I'm going to change the vertex count to 20 because we don't need that much geometry. And I'm going to change the triangle, uh, the uh, fill type to triangle fan. Okay, we go back into edit mode. Press R to rotate on the Y axis 90 degrees. I'm going to put it into the side view. Turn on X ray and we can just move that up, say roughly in the centre of there, and we just scale it down until it fits, and that looks about right there. Yes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to scale that on the X so it overlaps. And the reason for this is because we're going to use this to carve a piece out of this. So if we select on box it on the cube here, and we go to the modifier tab just there, we can then click add modifier and boolean. We want it on difference, and then we want to click this little pipette for the object and then click on the cylinder. Now this doesn't always work, it uh, depends on the geometry and everything, it looks like it's actually worked, but sometimes if when you hide this object it hasn't carved out of there, um, I don't know exactly why it does that, but if you click the fast button there, then it will, um, it, it will, it will work. Um, for some reason, the boolean function on 2.9 and above is a bit, a bit dodgy, so to speak. Okay, so now what we do is go back into front mode. Now we'll readjust this model. I'm going to tab, select all, and we'll scale on the X to bring it right in so that it's in line just here. Simple as that. Okay. I'm not going to do any beveling or smoothing on these just yet because I've got a little bit of work. Um, what I want to do is hide this and I hide this. And you know what? I didn't apply the boolean. Did so if I press Control Z, I'm going to bring it back to there. Now if I click on the, um, go to object mode, click on there, hover over here, Control A to click, uh, to apply the boolean. So now when you move this it's carved out of that that was my mistake there so again we'll scale this on the x-axis no on the x-axis that's it and there we go just about there so we're back to where we were so now we will hide that and we will hide that now the problem with this piece is if i was to shade smooth right now you would get all this mess here. It looks horrible. And the reason for this is because this is an end gun. And again, if I was to put a bevel on this now, it, you'd see it, it messes it up. Um, it doesn't work right at all. It doesn't work right at all, it's, it's a mess. So if I just get rid of that bevel for there, so if I go into this, and the way to fix this is quite simple. You need to get this geometry here, these lines here, to go all the way around. So what we will do, first things first, I'm going to cut this model in half by putting a, a loop cut with Control R here. And then if I go to press 1 to go into vertex mode, select all these vertices I can press X and delete the vertices I think I can then go into the modifier tab and add a mirror on the x-axis remembering to put clip clipping on and basically what clipping does is it stops this from um, moving away and leaving a gap if I was to turn that off now I could go like this and I could go like that and tear it apart but with clipping it automatically merges this the, the central edge. Right, so what I want to do is press 3 to go into face mode and select that end gone. And we want to get rid of that. Delete it by pressing X and then F. 
for faces. And back into vertex mode so we can count the vertexes here on there. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need to add with control R, I need to add two, three, four, five, six, seven loops. Okay, now that matches the geometry on there. In edge mode, Alt and select that loop, Shift select to remove those two. We can press Control E and select bridge edge loops, and it's edge is bridge them edge loops. It's still not quite right because what we now have to do is we will go up to the snapping tool here. We're not going to turn it on, but we're going to press this little pull down menu here and select vertex, and then we're going to select this edge here. And if I press G and Y, so that only goes in that direction, I can hover over this vertex and press the control, and it will snap it to that location. And I can do that with each of these edge loops here. And the reason I mirrored on the other side is so that I don't have to do this on both sides. It would do it for me. And then I can uh, just apply the mirror later on apply the mirror later on and uh, it would have done it for me so I can do that now I can press control a apply that mirror go back in here I'm going to delete this edge loop X and I right. solve the edge loop and it's still not quite right obviously because um, of the smooth shading so all we have to do is just to go around these ed these these edges select all these edges and then control B and just give it a little little bit of a bevel and look at that all smoothed off and, and nice. there we go okay so let's bring everything back and again I want to duplicate this and uh, I'm just gonna bring it out on the X for now because I'll need that later and with this one again I'm gonna add modifier bevel to this and I'm going to bring that right down to 0 0.02 0 .2. add one more segment to it and then I'm going to click this button here and click angle and I'm going to bring that up and keep bringing that up and up and up and up, 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 up until eventually it still does nothing. Okay, so what's happening here for some reason is it's allowing it's it's creating bevels on these edges which we don't want and for some reason the angle method you, you can see as as you as you move it up and down you can see slightly slight movement in here it's not beveling it right so we're going to get rid of that we're going to lose that I'm just going to double check to make sure that the scale is one yeah so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way uh, press number two to get into edge mode and I'm going to select that edge loop all the way around with alt and left click and shift alt left click this and we can control B and then just bring it out I'm going to scroll that down we only need the one extra edge, edge loop in there do that and then if I shade smooth now, it's all shaded smooth and nice there, like that. Right, this piece here, this is going to be the top of the leg. So we need to bring that back in to about the middle of the leg. Now I'm not going to follow this exactly, I'm not going to have it tapered on this side because I've, I've looked at Lego figures, they're not actually tapered and I don't, I don't know why this reference is tapered, but uh, it's... It's just one of those things, these references aren't always perfect. So I'm going to go into um, edit mode. I'm going to scale that, scale that on the X axis. I'm going to bring it all the way out until it just about there. GX just overlaps, sorry, underlaps that right hand edge there. 
so we have a slight little dip in there right and then we need to create the straight part of the leg so we're going to right mode right orthographic mode there and let's have a look so I'm going to go into face mode and I'm going to select this face and I'm going to press control and left click for that face and let's see is, is that the right yes and I'm going to go E and press Z twice to bring it so it's going directly down and just drag that down to there. Now I need to straighten this edge, so I'll press S to scale, Z on the Y axis, and press zero, and that straightens the faces up there. Okay, and before I go any further, I'm going to go into edge mode, I'm gonna select this edge, loop, select this edge loop, this edge loop, this edge loop, and this edge loop. All the way around like that. I'm going to press X and I'm going to dissolve the ed um, the edges by pressing I. And again, this one and this one. X and I. And we should be able to get there. There. That should be right. Yep, that's right. Okay, back into this mode. I want to select the bottom there and just bring it down to about there. Make sure we're in face mode for this. Extrude down to the bottom here. And then select this face here. And extrude out for the toe. And it's as simple as that. Now we need to give it a nice bit of smoothing and beveling. Because obviously, if we go into object mode now and we smooth that. Select that and smooth that. It's going to look a bit there. So, <laughs> I'm going to go into there. Go into edge mode. I'm going to select that edge. I'm going to select this edge, 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 and this edge, and this edge. And I'm going to put a bevel on there by pressing Ctrl B, and again, just bring it out slightly like so. And there you go. All nice and smooth. Simple as that. Now to get that on the other side, we we're gonna we're just literally gonna go add modifier mirror and have it on the X and then we click this little pipette and if we click on this cylinder here with the X ticked, it will create on the other side. For now I'm going to um, leave that mirror modifier there um, because I will want to un unwrap this UVs on this and it's easier to unwrap one and then apply the, the mirror so that the two UV islands are created than to individually unwrap both pieces so there we have it now for the head and for the head I'm just going to make sure that the um, cursor 3d cursor is in the center by pressing control sorry shift and C and there we go, it moves to the center of the screen. I'm going to create a cylinder. Again, I want 20 vertices on that. That looks fine. Triangle fan looks brilliant. Okay, go into edit mode, and we want to bring with G and Z that all the way up to the top, just there. And if we go into X-ray mode, we can select the bottom, and we do G and Z again, and bring it up to this line here. Select all of it, then we press S to scale, and we exclude the z-axis, because we don't want it to go up and down, and we bring that in, just about there, we can hold the shift key to slow down the movement, doesn't look much like a, uh, a Lego head at the moment, does it, um, but if we do a shade smooth on it, we'll go into front view, and then we can, with edge mode selected, alt click this edge and alt click this edge. And then we can press control and B and we can bevel it out. And I think if we put in three loop cuts there, that should be enough to hold the shape of that just about right. There we go. 
And there we go, we've got the right shape for the head there. We just need the little knobs on the top and the bottom, which is an easy little job to do. Simply clear it, um, press Alt A to clear selection, press C, go into face mode, press C, and select all of these faces here. Go into front orthographic, press E to extrude, and we'll bring it up to this line here. Obviously that's a little bit wide, so what we want to do is press Alt and left click on any of the vertical lines in that loop and it selects all the way around as you can see. And if we then press S and again excluding the Z axis we can bring that down to the right size which is about there. Again we can do the same thing on the bottom. Select all of the faces on there extrude to bring them down, bring them into the, the body, I'd say. There. And then select the loop, S, excluding the Z, and bring it in. And it didn't need that much bringing in, to be honest. And I've noticed for some reason, all of these pieces, I will select them, and I'm going to bring them forward instead of moving the reference. Odd reason. Here we go. Right. Okay, and we've got a la one last piece to do with the head. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to hide the body so we can see it easier. We don't need these these faces here, so we need to delete them. No point having them if we don't need them. We need to sharpen this little edge up a little bit by going to edge mode by pressing two and, and all clicking that loop. And then we can press control B and just bring it out. And I'm gonna bring down just so that there's only one extra loop in there. You can see it sharpens it off. And we do the same up here. This edge loop here, control B, B and just bring it out slightly just to sharpen it. And then on the top, go into front orthographic mode we want to select that ledge edge loop on the top go into front orthographic mode press control B and bring it down and so that it's about right there so I'd say that many and there we have it we have if I press alt H and bring that back we have the body legs and head already done now I'm gonna save this I haven't saved this yet um, best advice I can give you is make sure you save soon and often because you never know when um, your software is going to crash and you're going to lose everything right now on to the hardest part of this we have to create this arm as you see it's, it's a bit of a curved bendy sort of shape it's a bit difficult and I don't have a perfect blueprint for this this is a lot different size to this um, let's see if I can I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit because I've noticed that that is actually bigger than than that so what I'm gonna do now is from the side view press shift and Z to go into um, wireframe and I'm going to click on the image and just bring it back so it's in line about there and hopefully that should be about right I want to bring that down just oops G Z just bring it down right so I've watched a lot of videos on this topic um, specifically Lego men and one of the hardest parts to do is the arms and there are actually multiple methods um, some start with a cylinder some start with a circle some start with a sphere um, I find 
personally if I create circles and then join them together and then add half a sphere to the top it's the easiest route for me so that's what I'm going to show you how to do so first things first I'm going to shift right click around there and then as you can see the cursor is, is, is on there so if I press N now and go to view I can then using this slider here I can move that cursor up to where the body is so if I go into right off a graphic I'm going to turn off wireframe so I can see it better and I can then move that to where I think it should be so about there so it's now right there so if I create shift a mesh circle I'm going to reduce this down to 16 vertices I don't need anything like that anything more than that and from the front here I can go into edit mode and scale that down as close as I can to about there and then in this mode I'm going to turn on the x-ray and rotate it so it's roughly it's not perfect but it's close as you can see so what I'll do is I'll go back into object mode select that G Z that so that it's in line with that and what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll make all of my geometry in this this view and then I'll um, all of the the support loops in this view and then I'll move into the um, front view adjust them from that angle and then I will join them together to create the arm so first things first what we'll do is we will shift D duplicate that again and move that to roughly there and I'd say that would about right but what I want to do is I'm going to go into vertice mode and I'm going to choose the topmost vertice there right on the top there and press shift C shift S cursor to selected then I'm going to change the transform pivot point to the 3D cursor. And then if I select all of this, oops, I can then ro rotate it around the cursor. Which is a great thing to do because A, it's easier to get it to rotate and B, it doesn't stretch the, um, the vertices. And then what I want to do is Shift D, duplicate it again and move it just to about there and then rinse repeat do the same thing again topmost vertice shift s cursor selected select the loop rotate again again I'm not trying to get it perfect to this picture because it's not right it's different angles to this so uh, I'm doing best guess scenario at the moment uh, but again Duplicate, move, right. select that, shift S, cursor selected, L to select the loop again, rotate, and the upper arm should start developing there. And then all I need to do is duplicate again move it all the way up to about there and then what I will do is I'll go back to the medium point and with that selected press S Z 0 and that will straighten that out there so we now have all the loops in place ready to, to join up now we will go to the front view and obviously as you can see they are very very wrong so if I go if I take this one and GX move it to 
around there. We don't mind if it's overlapping. Now, this is slightly different to what a lot of people do. A lot of people do this with a flat piece, um, with this curve up here as flat against there. Um, but I might want to create a character out of this and for the sake of being able to move the arms about it's best to have that joint as a ball in shape so that when you're moving it it's not it's because it's because it'll be moving as a separate object rather than joined to the main mesh um, if you move it about it will look strange if it's not a ball joint so I, I create this with a ball joint it's only a little bit extra geometry and it makes a difference and again as you can see they, these are all in the wrong places so I'm gonna G move these and rotate it slightly this way again this G and hopefully that will give me shape so what I will do now is I will select this loop and this loop and we'll control E as before bridge edge loops gives it a nice little bridge and then we'll do the same to these two control E and bridge edge loops and again there control E and bridge edge loops and the final one control E Control E and bridge edge loops, and let's bring that out of this way. And that doesn't look too bad. Um, I think that needs to come this way a little bit, but that's not too bad at all. Um, some tiny little adjustments most of this is is you know it's all about tiny little adjustments and trying to get it right it's not bad at all now if I was to shape that smooth yeah I think that looks about right excellent now what I want to do is I want to take this edge loop and I want to press F3 to do a search and type in grid fill and we just fill that with a little grid there and again in edge mode select this edge oops and press control B and just a quick bevel on that Now what we want to do is we want to create this curve piece here, which I'm going to have as half a cylinder. As you can see, I've made that nice and flat on the top there, so this should be pretty easy by simply selecting this edge loop here, press Control, uh, sorry, Shift and S, and cursor selected. Press 1, and we'll Shift A, and create a UV sphere. And what I'm going to do is we're going to drop that down to, was it 20? One second. I'm going to go back and check uh, Shift A cylinder. It was 20, it was. We'll get rid of that. So let's do that. Um, UV sphere 20 by 10. And then what we do is. F3, delete that loop, delete that, and then the rest of it we will scale down. Actually what we want to do is we want to switch to the 3D cursor and then scale down to there. And eventually it will go down and down and down to about... 
about there. And we're going to go RZ to bring it around. That doesn't look right at all. I did do 20 on that, didn't I? Three, four. Oh, it was the circle and it was 16. My my bad. We're going to delete that and we'll start again. UV sphere, it was 16. 16 and then 8. Right, that should be better. We'll just get rid of this part and this part. And then we can go wee. That should bring it down perfectly. Okay, and if we select everything and then press M by distance, let's see it's done two, so that's not quite what we want. Let's press this button here and this increases the range. No, too many, too many. Oh, I see. For some reason, I have that selected. done. We want to go into x-ray mode and select all of these vertices here and then R, Y and just bring it in like so. Just want to scale that down a little bit and then bring it up to that there. And that should now Shade smooth again. Be a nice little Lego arm. Now I've got to add the bevel back to this because when I merge the vertices, it merged those, but it's not a big deal. I'm press Control V, bevel. And there we have it, we have our arm. So again, now we want to go to the modifier tab and click mirror. And with the pipette, click on the body so that it's mirrored on the other side. Again, I'm going to leave this mirrored for now so that I have less work to do later with UV unwrapping. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do the hands, and then we will finish there um, for now with um, just the hands. And uh, in the next video, I will continue with UV unwrapping and texture painting. So let's create the hands. Okay, so the hands are quite a simple model. They're pretty much a half, half, half a uh, circle and with a little curve at the back here. So what I will do is I will create a circle, actually. Press Shift C to bring it back and I will create a cylinder. I'm going to make that 10 and I'm going to turn off the end cap on it. Simple as that. Okay, so now I've got that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this face, I'm going to loop cut and loop cut. And I'm going to go to face mode and delete these two faces, X and F. And there's your general shape of the, the hand there. do it in this this mode sorry in front mode I'll we'll select it all and RX90 back into front mode and scale it all the way down now I just scaled in object mode that no I didn't I was in edit mode it was okay that's fine 
what I was worrying about there is, is scaling it in this mode, in, in object mode, because what that does is if I was to scale it down like so, it would make these non-uniform, um, which could cause trouble with booleans and, and, and other modifiers. So I always try to edit my mesh in edit mode. That's what it's for. So anyway, I'll bring it up to around there and scale it all the way down. And looking at that, I don't really need these two faces here either. Okay, so we have the, the general shape, and then what we want is we want to rotate it so it's roughly in place there. So it is a bit bit big that way so if I select in edge mode select this one G Y bring it in a little bit and then we should be able to line it up roughly it doesn't have to be exact what I want to do is you notice on this there's a curve here so if I go into vertice mode and just bring them up click them to we can go GG and that bring makes it move along that line. If we press G, it can move anywhere. If I press G Y, it can move that way, X this way, Z this way. But if I press G and then G again, it will only follow the existing line whichever way you move it. So we'll move that up that way. And then we'll select these two, press G, G, and then we'll move that just just a tiny bit no, there. and then move that a little bit more just to give it a little bit of a curve and I'm going to turn on shade smooth on that I mean, it's quite nice actually that so if I go to add modifier now I can go down to solidify and what this does is this increases the geometry it solidifies the the model so if I bring that up a little bit as you can see about one more there it then gives it the, the, the solid value so what I can do, then do is put another modifier on there and a bevel modifier and we'll bring this down to 0 0.002 that's my favourite number in this but again you see these edges are, are um, not uh, have been beveled as well so we need to put angle on there and then we can bring the angle up to about 50 and that should then sharpen the edges but leave the angle where it is it's not too bad in there like that excellent okay so now I can apply these go back into the mesh and you see it's now solidified the actual mesh I should maybe should have I'm going to go back and that's it I'm just going to add an extra loop into that there we go right that's better now I want to create the tube that connects that so what I found is a really good way of doing that is control R putting three edge loops on there and I can go into face mode select one two three four five six faces on there and then I can go up to effect on my end menu and this is an add-on that I've got installed called loop tools you add that through your add-ons menu um, but it gives you some extra tools for, for loops. I can then hit circle and it turns that into a circle. Unfortunately, that hasn't seemed to have worked properly. But we can undo that. And it's probably because I've got too many loops in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go there. And 
there we go on that one we can then hit circle and there we go it's creating a circle I can then extrude that out to the hand Now what I want to do is just to sharpen this piece up because obviously it is a bit uh, warped looking is to select all these edges all the way around press Control B and just bring it out a little bit and that should smooth it out a bit and what I will need to do now is Just do some fine tuning with the rotation. Oh look, I'm I'm still rotating from the wrong place. Oh no. There we go. And we go like so. Just to get it in the right way. And there we have it. We have the basic Lego figure out. And we've just had a quick mirror modifier on this. In fact, I won't do that. What I'll do is I'll click on this, click on the arms, and press Ctrl and J, and join them together. And there we have our basic Lego figurine. Um, and that's where we will leave it for this uh, video. Uh, in the next video, I will take that video, uh, that uh, figurine, I will UV unwrap it, and then I will use texture painting to give it some colour. So if thank you for watching. If you uh, like the content and want to see more, please hit the like and the subscribe. And uh, hope to see you next time. Goodbye.